Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the Ruger LCP Max in 380, as well as the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 2.0, also in 380. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. The LCP Max is an evolution of the LCP, which has been around for a very long time, and they've improved it over the years, but it stayed small. So I originally showed it to you with the 12 round magazine that's optional. These tend to come only with the 10 round magazines, but the 12 is available. And the 12 round, or I'm sorry, the 10 round magazine is a flush mag, and it pretty much fits on the palm of my hand. It's a small little gun. And the LCPs originally had lower capacity, they were a single stack, and the Max expanded that to a, kind of that stack and a half that's going on where it's double stack at the bottom, single at the top, and you moved it into 10 or 12 round capacity. That's the Micro 9 started that trend, and the LCP, they picked up on that with the 380. They also, the LCP has gone for over the years to uh, improved trigger. So the trigger on this is actually pretty light and a nice defined crisp break. Kind of a longish reset. It's about all the way out and then a little bit of take up to get back on the wall and then the break again. Overall, I would say it's a good trigger. It's not an awesome trigger, but it's actually a really good trigger, especially for one of these tiny little things. A kind of a departure from Ruger's typical, it does not have a thumb safety. It also does not have a magazine disconnect. It doesn't have a piston-based drop safety, but because this is an internal hammer gun, they have the inertial toggle on the trigger and the safeties are built into the fire control mechanism. I kind of prefer to have that piston that gives you that positive block of the striker, but, or the firing pin. The, I haven't heard of any of these firing when they're dropped, so I haven't heard of any drop safety issues with them, but it is not my favorite design for how drop safety should work. The other problem that we had with this in the very beginning with the 12 round magazines, notice that 12 round magazine locks back. It's one of the newer magazines. If I put a one of the original 12 rounds that came with the gun, doesn't lock back. They did fix that problem, so chances are pretty good. If you're buying a new one today, you probably won't have that problem. But if you're buying a used one or new old stock that's been around for a while, check to make sure that the magazine actually locks back. If it doesn't, you can get in touch with Ruger. They will replace it. They did fix the magazine issue. The other problem we had with these is uh, coming apart when they were dropped. But again, the newer magazines seem to solve that problem. Ignoring that, because it has been fixed, the gun itself has actually been a reliable little gun. The sights are decent at the front. It's got a, a tritium sight with a ring, so it's easy to see, but it has a blackout rear, which I don't like. However, having sights at the back at, at, at all and a decent front sight is a departure from the normal with these little tiny things. So it's got a better sight than this genre typically has but not as good as I would like it to be. I'd like to have some dot or U or something at the back to line up on. You get 10 rounds or 12 rounds of 380 in a very light, small package. This thing that's sitting on, on my hand right now weighs 10.8 ounces, empty of course. Now, let's talk about the bodyguard. And the bodyguard has gone through a significant evolution. They've improved the LCPs over the years, made the trigger better and things like that, but the LCP was always a decent gun. The bodyguard, when it first started out, the original bodyguard was hideous. It had all kinds of problems. The trigger was absolutely horrible on it. Uh, it had a laser that the screw would back out and jam the slide. There was a lot to hate about the original bodyguard. Then they came up with the M&P bodyguard and they improved the trigger and took care of those other issues. Then they came out with this. This is actually a gun I like. So if they, the name is the same, but they've really drastically improved this gun. And now, they, of course, they don't have the M&P name tied to it, and that's just how they're choosing to name it. And it's also a striker gun now instead of a hammer gun. So with being a striker gun, it has a very nice trigger. Nice, short, crisp, actually quite light break. 
kind of a halfway longish reset, a little bit of take up to get back on the wall, and then a nice break. I would say this has a nice trigger, kind of like the LCP. It's not an awesome trigger, but it is quite a nice trigger, especially for a tiny little gun like this, and even more, especially considering the history of these things. So they have two magazines they come with, or at least this one did, a 10 round flush mag, and you're getting that palms uh, your hand kind of size gun and a 12 round mag which gives you a full three finger grip and I haven't had any problems with this this gun has just worked there is uh, an inertial toggle on the trigger there is a piston style drop safety and there is a thumb safety available to be back in this area for those that prefer a thumb safety the sights are similar to the Ruger you know you've got a tritium with a ring and a blackout rear so I would say neither one of these wins the sight game. I would prefer something better on the rear. But one thing I did notice, the gap on the rear is big enough that you can kind of find the front sight, but it's almost a hair too big. Kind of gives you a little bit of uh, variation. So it's kind of hard to pull super tight you know, bullseye groups with this. But that's kind of not the point of these. These are concealed carry, you know, the type of deep concealed guns, and you're going to you're going to give up that bullseye accuracy with them. Uh, but I think with better sights, you might have a little bit better accuracy. And that could be, by the way, an important consideration. If this is what you're carrying when an event goes down, this is what you're using, like it or not. So, you know, having sights that are a little more capable is beneficial. I'm going to put the flush mag in both of these and kind of show you some size comparisons because they are similar in size. So the Ruger is actually a little bit longer but not enough that you're going to matter. It's 5.7 versus 5.5 for the bodyguard, and I'll turn them around. From a size perspective, they're close. The Ruger is going to win the weight game, 10.8 ounces, as opposed to 11.4 for the bodyguard. But overall, I'll set them end up. You'll see the bodyguard's a little bit longer. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. If I set them up on their end they're very close the Ruger is just a hair taller if I kind of do this you'll see the Ruger is just a hair taller but not again a significant amount and the Ruger is a little bit thinner but they're both less than an inch thick so they're both going to be about the same when you're trying to carry them and the barrels are close uh, they're both 2.78 for the bodyguard and 2.8 for the Ruger so the barrel length the velocity you're going to get out of them is very comparable so you're probably not making a decision on these based on weight or dimensions unless that extra you know, tenth of an inch is going to make a difference to you. Most likely it's not. You're not going to make a decision necessarily on capacity. They both have 10 round flush mags and 12 round available. Bodyguard happens to come with two mags. That's kind of a bit of an advantage. And honestly, you're not going to make a decision based on MSRP. The MSRP of the bodyguard is 449 and the Ruger is 479. So it's really going to come down to what fits in your hand better and what do you like better. Uh, if I were doing this review with the original bodyguard, it would be hands down Ruger, no other conversation needed, just done. But with the bodyguard 2.0, the improvements they've made of it, uh, I like the fact that it has the positive safeties, internal safeties. I probably would pick the bodyguard in this particular comparison. It has a little bit better serrations. The slides are similar on these. The Ruger slide's a little bit lighter, but the uh, bodyguard slide's a little bit more defined. It's a little bit easier to determine where you're at with the slide, but not enough that's going to make a difference. And ignoring the magazine issue that we had with the Ruger when it first came out that they have subsequently fixed, both of them have actually been reliable. But overall, I think the bodyguard has passed the Ruger in overall ergonomics and function and everything else. And the sights on both of them are replaceable, so if you know you could do something about that rear sight if you wanted to. And neither one of these offer optics ready, which is kind of common with the super tiny guns like this. So if you're looking for a 380 polymer gun and you're looking for something deep concealed that's actually got a reasonable amount of capacity and is reliable, either will work. Personally, I would go with the bodyguard, the 2.0, specifically, not the original bodyguard. 
Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble, we're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.